Hi, Brockton residents and business owners. It's Robert Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, and welcome to our 46th episode of Our Brockton. And the title speaks for itself, Our Brockton. It's our community, it's our home, it's our city, and really the purpose of the show is to educate and inform uh, and just introduce you to people making a difference here in the City of Champions. And there's one person I want to introduce you to. She is a, a real huge part of uh, Team Sullivan. Jasmine Bradshaw, who is a uh, director of social services. Jasmine, thanks for being on today. Absolutely. How are you? I'm good. How are you? For those that don't know you, maybe you could just uh, what does a social services director in the mayor's office do? And then maybe what was some of your your past uh, professional endeavors? Sure. So I am a licensed social worker. I have an LCSW. Um, I am able to offer referrals for counseling services. I can connect people to different resources depending upon what they're looking for: housing, clothing, food. Um, a very wide range. It covers a lot of different things, some that people don't necessarily realize is part of a social services role. Um, I do a lot of community outreach, especially to those who are unhoused. Um, we have a lot of different task forces that I lead. We have a substance use prevention task force. Um, we have a homeless task force. We are working on a human trafficking prevention task force. Um, I sit in on a lot of other community meetings. Um, You've been busy this summer with the After Dark program at yes, Brockton High Brockton School. After Dark. It wouldn't have happened without you, so thank you for what you do. And Absolutely. So you, you, you came to the mayor's office, you took a leap of faith, you hit the ground running, you, you truly save lives and make a difference each and every day here in Brockton. But before that, you worked for Father Bill's Mainspring. Yes, for about six and a half years. And, and so we're going to, you're going to, Viewers, you're going to be introduced to two to wonderful gentlemen that work every day um, to, to better the lives of those facing homelessness. And Brockton, I'm the mayor of everybody. If you live in a house or if unfortunately circumstances prevent you and you are homeless. And Jasmine, um, you're dealing with people that uh, have lost their house for many reasons, right? Their ability to have a roof over their head, uh, drugs and alcohol, mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Maybe they lost their house in a, a foreclosure epidemic. Um, when folks come to see you, because I witness it, you know, first first case when I see you do it, um, you do it in a compassionate way. But you also have great partners at Father Bill's. And could you introduce our two, two, uh, two guests that are uh, with you today? Absolutely. So I do a lot of work with both John Lanham and Josh Brown, who both work for Father Bill's in Mainspring. Um, I do a lot of work directly with Josh, who is overseeing the outreach team. Um, Josh comes with me to do outreach to the community. We check in on those experiencing homelessness. We try to offer resources. Um, he has a really great team of people working with him. So it's been really helpful to have someone else that you can kind of you know, use as a backboard to bounce ideas off of and to also have as a secondary person to follow up with people. So. I want to welcome you both. I want to thank you, John thank you. and Josh, for what you do every day. Again, Father Bills, for those that don't know, Father Bills here is in, in Brockton. It's also in the city of Quincy uh, as well. They're the city of presence, but we're the city of champions. So um, <laughs> could you guys just maybe tell those watching a little bit about your, your past professional endeavors and what, what drew you to, to, to Brockton and Father Bills here in downtown? Sure. You want me to go? I'll go first, sure. Uh, so I have actually, I've lived in Brockton my entire life. I was born here and I've never left. Um, I've been with, Main, I've been at Father Bill's in Mainstream maybe about a year and a half now. Um, prior to that, I spent almost 20 years running restaurants. Um, but I got involved with a, a friend of mine. He planted and pastored a church in downtown and did a lot of uh, late night street ministry. We'd go out nine o'clock towards Perkins Park and the surrounding area with, you know, clothing, food bits, just a little bit of humanity, really. Um, and that was really what shifted my mind change from working for a for profit towards doing something that was more, you know, had a lot more long term impact and was more important to really the community that I lived in. So, um, I finished my counseling degree in uh, early of 2022, and I, I left the restaurant field and came here um, as the outreach manager, uh, and I am now the housing resource center director for Father Bill. So I oversee all street outreach uh, diversion, which is kind of like a front door proactive approach to um, homelessness, as well as all of the case management in the shelter. Um, and soon to be also all of the youth services for the city of Brockton out of the shelter as well. Well, I want to thank you, Josh, because, I mean, you, you've been a wonderful partner since I've been mayor. Um, and, John, you, you, you as well. I mean, you're an expert in your field. And could you just maybe tell a little bit about yourself? Sure. No, I appreciate the opportunity. Uh, again, my name is John Land. I'm the senior programs director at Father Bills in Mainspring. I've been with the company now for about 14 years. Uh, prior to that, worked a little bit in higher education as I was doing my master's in social work as well. Uh, but the bulk of my career has been with Father Bills in Mainspring. Um, 
don't hold it against me, but I grew up in Quincy. But you know, certainly, you know, I've been thrilled to work in this community for you know over the past decade and really look for opportunities to engage people, whether it comes to individual shelter and outreach programs. But Father Bill's Mainspring also has a large family sheltering component, and really the biggest area that we're trying to focus our growth and development in is housing development. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think we really understand like. There's there's a serious lack of affordable housing in the region. We need to develop housing that's appropriate for the individuals who are unhoused, that need the space, that's handicap accessible, that has the supported services that are available. And so for us as an agency, we're really trying to look at how do we prevent those emergency situations, but also find long-term solutions for people in housing. And um, at this point, we're up to we'll be up to about 800 units of housing in, yeah. within the next year. Wow. So, I think that's for us as an agency is what we're most excited about is just to see more opportunities for people to have a safe place to stay. I mean, I, I took off the six weeks before the pandemic, right? Mm-hmm. And so uh, Murphy's Law, right? Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but I, I but I will say this: the collaboration between City Hall, mm-hmm. my office, Father Bill, as the healthcare clinicians at Neighborhood mm-hmm. Health Center, mm-hmm. Brockton Hospital Signature. And, could say everybody was on the same page, right? Mm-hmm. And so we knew that the pandemic was gonna spread like wildfire in close confined areas, right? And so thinking outside the box, working with our state partners, we put you know tents up at mm-hmm. Perkins Park, right? Yeah. To, to do it six feet and meet all the protocols. Mm-hmm. But um, since that time, the relationship has continued, mm-hmm. right? With your leadership team and with all of your employees. So roadway, when I grew up in Brockton, the Carlton House was mm-hmm. the hotel yeah. right before you get on 24. Talk to us about Roadway, because yeah. Roadway is considered truly an example that um, we're at the forefront of the Commonwealth, but it started here. Yeah, yeah. It's we were incredibly excited for the opportunity to go into Roadway. Um, we had been watching what California had been doing and you know some of the, um, the Housing First initiatives they had done with hotel conversions. And when uh, the opportunity came to rent out the Roadway as a sheltering space, we saw a dramatic decrease in the number of infectious diseases or, or COVID um, cases that were spreading within the shelter. Prior to the tents and roadway, we were seeing 30 to 35% of our people experiencing COVID. Once we had those in place, it dropped to about 5%. Wow. And so, and it was what all the science was telling us. If you give someone their own space, let them social distance, it just kept them uh, in a much safer spot. Um, but we were excited that the owners of Roadway were interested in an opportunity to sell the building. Mm-hmm. And so for us, it was the first time uh, to be able to go into a hotel with the idea that we we're going to use this as an opportunity to convert the building while it's occupied, do a lot of, co- which was challenging to do construction while people are still living there. But, you know, it ended up with 69 units of permanent supported housing that people will be able to use for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, under the Baker Polito administration, I mean, I took a tour with mm-hmm. Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito at the time, and she just raved about it, you know, yeah. and um, you're doing that as well in Stoughton now as well. Aren't you looking at the, the uh, Stoughton Motel? Correct. Yes, yeah. yes. So there's a Stoughton Motel that yeah. uh, we're working with that it's about, that'll be about 24 units, yep. a little bit smaller project. Yep. but. Uh, no one's currently staying there, a shelter, but yeah, we'll be looking to um, rehab those spaces, add kitchenettes to the hotel room, so That's people great. are able to... I mean, yeah, we're all in the people there. business. We're trying to help yeah. people, right? Exactly. Um, we're going to get to Manly because the Manly Street Project is, is a game changer, yeah. not just for Father Bills uh, and those facing homelessness, mm-hmm. but the wraparound services, and just it's really giving stepping stones for success. But Jazz, yeah. people talk about the point in time. Like, Can you explain what what is the annual count how do you and, and you and I walked out? We were with Josh and <clears throat> explain to people what that means because I've been asked many times, like Mayor Sullivan, why were you out that night? Like, what's the purpose of that? Sure. Um, so when I was at Father Bill's, I was the lead for the point in time count for the Brockton region. Mm-hmm. What it is is there is a chosen night in January every single year, and groups of people go out into different communities that have a higher level of homeless residents. Um, we go out, we get information from them, demographic information. But realistically, we get a count of how many people are still staying on the streets. That number is then added to the number of people staying in shelters, hospitals, and other programs reporting homelessness. Mm -hmm. And it gives the state a general idea of how many people at the time are experiencing homelessness. Um, And this year, we were lucky enough to have a lot of new people at Father Bill's, including Josh. So Mm -hmm. we had more opportunities for larger groups, and there there was a lot more space to cover this year. It was a great night. Yeah. The weather was with us that night as well. It wasn't freezing, you know. (laughs) I think, I think when we talk about collaboration mm-hmm. and, and your CEO, John Yuzinski, and I have become a really good uh, a team together yeah. is trying to figure out how we can help people, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what the whole thing is. We're trying to help people. 
So the Manly Street project, mm -hmm. it was federal land. Um, they were putting it out to bid. Um, McKenty Vento was a law that allowed those that provide services to those facing homelessness to, to bid on it. <clears throat> so myself on the local level, mm -hmm. the state delegation, um, uh, state reps and state senator, yep. uh, Congressman Steve Lynch has mm -hmm. been a wonderful advocate. Yep. Um, so the property, and we did the groundbreaking, it was awesome, and yep. Lieutenant Governor Kim Driscoll was there, but mm -hmm. explain to people, number one, where is Manly Street, mm -hmm. and what is this campus setting, wraparound services concept? What does that even mean? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, so Manly Street's actually right behind the VA. Yes. If you're, depending on where the front of the VA is to you, so it's, it's kind of tucked away a little bit. Right off of Belmont Street, if you yeah, exactly, down Belmont. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep. Kind of uh, headed back towards the, the back side of the, the VA there off the main gate. Um, and the way that the, 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 the HRC is kind of set up is the services will be open during the daytime. Right now, the way the shelter exists currently is guests wake up in the morning, uh, they're fed breakfast, and they're asked to vacate the premise for the day. They, they're not allowed to stay in. There's outside of uh, rehousing case management, mm -hmm. there's nothing occurring inside the shelter that necessitates individuals to be in except for lunch and then dinner when they can come back in for the night. Uh, the way the HRC is being set up is it'll be open during the daytime, and there'll be other services outside of just our housing agency. Um, so those case management services will still exist, um, as well as our diversion services. So if you are experiencing, about to experience homelessness, maybe you're living in an unstable housing condition, you're couch surfing, you're about to be evicted, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, those services are available during the day, but there's also capacity to bring in harm reduction services, behavioral health services. Uh, there'll be a clinic on site for our guests who require medical service or even just regular routine appointments. Won't have to go and find a doctor, we'll have a clinic on site that can do anything from routine checkups to you know, really determine should you go to the ER or be admitted somewhere. There's an actually there's a medical professional in the building at all times, um, as well as other non-professional services like maybe a, a workforce training or professional development or resume building. Yeah. Things like that will all get yep. brought in and they'll all be available yeah. on, on a schedule at the HRC during the daytime when right now not much is going on in the shelter because it's not built for that. When do we plan to see this opening? So our hope is probably winter 2024. 2024. So site work has started on this property now. Um, we had to disconnect the building from the VA sewer line, connected yep. um, to a different one. Uh, did some of the excavation behind the current building where a new housing development will be going is going on now. So all the site work is progressing on schedule, which yeah, we're, we're just happy to see shovels in the ground. And yeah, and there's gonna be a new forward. sidewalk on, on that part all yes. the way up to your building yep. and the bat bus, um, Mike Lambert and the bat is, is working to right. make sure that there's gonna be public transportation there yep. as well. Um, so I guess this is a question for all three of you. If you're new to Brockton and mm -hmm. you're facing homelessness, mm -hmm. what are some of your suggestions for that? person or, or people that are coming to Brockton. And I'll start with Jasmine because I witness people coming to the mayor's office all the time, City Hall. You always drop everything that you're doing to help these people. Um, what would be some of your suggestions if, if um, you know, I, I just came to Brockton, I was told come to Brockton because Brockton's a good place and this hospital's there and Father Bill's is there and there's a special person named Jasmine out of the mayor's <laughs> office. What would you suggest? I always suggest, um, we always start with housing applications. So if they haven't done any Brockton housing, the CHAMP application, any state funded housing, we do all those applications. Um, if they need them, we get IDs, birth certificates, social security cards, all those things processed. Um, we go through a checklist of what they have for income. Um, if there are forms of income they can apply for, we'll do that like social security applications, DTA, um, SNAP benefits, EAEDC. So we go through all of those things and just sit down and make sure they have all the basic needs met, clothing, food, things like all right, that. Yeah, food. I need food. I haven't had food in several days. What can you do to help me? So a big resource that we have there is Charity Guild. Mm -hmm. So we often connect with them. We can get either baskets of food. Sometimes we get gift cards, gift depending cards. on what's available um, or what's going to make the most sense for somebody. If you're outside, it's going to be really food, hard. healthy food, nutritionist food. Yeah, it'll yeah. be really hard to microwave something if you're outside. So Correct. we have the option to get the gift cards so that they can go buy like prepared foods from a grocery store or something like that. And one thing, again, we, we really haven't had a hot, hot, hot summer, thank God, yeah. right? right? We had a mild winter. but. You work with Steve Hook, who's director of BMA Brock Emergency Management. There's cooling kits going out to our homeless population. In the yes. winter months, we do um, the, the, the packs, which have sleeping bags and pillows. And 
Um, so if someone needs to reach you, how do they reach you, Jasmine? So they can either come directly into the office, um, they can reach me by phone, email. I do a lot of outreach, so I will oftentimes go find them before they need to come in just to do wellness checks on people. I like to make sure that all of our friends outside are okay and that we're not missing anybody, that no one's falling through the cracks. Um, but any possible way they can reach out, I am more than welcome. Yeah, and you do, all. you do. So thank you for what you do. Absolutely. Now, John and Josh, um, I'm new to this area. I've just come to Brockton. I heard about this thing called Father Bill's Mainspring. Mm -hmm. What are my next steps as someone yeah. that is interested in going to Father Bill's? Yeah, yeah. Um, so my team directs, so it's kind of a, a two step. So the shelter is on the corners of Mainspring and Spring Street, hence Mainspring House. Right. Um, anyone that's new that <laughs> wants to access the shelter who has never been to our shelter before actually goes through my team first. Um, we have a specialist, his title is a diversion specialist. Mm -hmm. His job is to sit with you and see if we can find any other option besides the emergency shelter system for you. That includes um, you know, sometimes it's a medical placement. Like if you just don't know where to go and you need help connecting with the hospital, we can do that. Sometimes it is sober homes, if that is an option. Um, you know, back, back in the day, a rooming house was a great option. Those aren't really a thing anymore. They're, they're, they're over the course of the last year and a half, they've really fallen off in, in popularity and, and what they are. Um, but it also could be if you have a family member in Texas, you're, you're, your great aunt lives in Texas and she says, yeah, I can, I, I can keep him. He can stay with me for an extended period of time. If we can get that communicated to us and get a, a verbal commitment from that individual, we'll send you to Texas mm. on our dime. We, wow. we have the money mm -hmm. that can do that. Wow. It's, we'd rather see you stably housed in Texas than see you in the emergency shelter system here, yeah, which can take, right. I think the average length to stay in the shelter right now is a little over 100 days. Okay. Yep. Um, so which you know so that, that's three three four months of yeah. you know in and out of the shelter system um, before you can before there's a likelihood that you're placed somewhere else. Okay. Um, so that's one of the services. It's not known about as much. It's, it's kind of a newer. Yeah. Uh, the department itself is only about a year and a half, two years old. Okay. Um, but that's that. That anyone that's also being sent to us from the hospital will go through this diversion program. They may be medically ineligible for shelter, or there may be social workers who are also unaware of this benefit that we have through our grant providers. That you know, it's a much better. It's a much better uh, option to rehab in a stable family situation somewhere yeah. than it is, you know, having to leave the shelter every day and, and things like that. So if yeah. I had someone Sorry. in another state or even somewhere in this state and I don't have the money to get there, Father Bills would have a, a mechanism to get that person yep. there for if stable we, housing. If wow. we could confirm That's with awesome. that family member yeah. or friend yeah. that, that you can indeed stay there stay for, there. And, and not like for the weekend. Right. It, no, no, it no. has to be a, no, a, a true yeah. stable yeah. situation, yeah. but yeah. Wow, that's great. The other, the other piece I would just want to note is, so everything Josh is talking about is really for adults that are age 18 and over, because mm -hmm. um, Mainspring House is meant for adults that don't have any children with them. And mm -hmm. if you are a family that's experiencing homelessness or you're unstably housed and just not sure what to do, um, the family sheltering system in Massachusetts is very regulated by the state government. And so I think the best spot, we always tell people is to go to a, the local DTA office. Um, the one right here in downtown Brockton is great because there are homeless coordinators from the Executive Office of Health, uh, Healthy Living Communities there. They can meet with you, talk about what the services are. Uh, Father Bills in Main Street, we have some of our diversion workers on site that we can get referrals from the state as well. Um, but the placements all have to go through the state. So okay. it's not that you can just, whereas Main Spring House, if someone needs shelter tonight, they can show up and get inside the building. You can't just walk up to a family shelter and necessarily get the same um, placement. So we always want to direct those families like to go to DTA as go soon as DTA, possible yeah. or call them, you know, make sure you're talking to someone there because um, they can coordinate places and they have a significant amount of you know services available they can provide so fantastic yeah. I, first of all thank you all for coming on the show and yep. the information you provided is is invaluable mm -hmm. um and what you do every day day to day in broad is saving lives and making a difference so i want to thank you john and josh and jasmine of course and people behind the camera i want to thank john Messia, my director of constituent services and community engagement jada grace our constituent liaison everyone's working together it's, we're better together it's collaboration mm -hmm. and BCA, I want to thank everybody that works at Brockton Community Access to allow us to, to film here at City Hall. Uh, you have just seen the 46th episode of Our Brockton. Uh, I am Mayor Robin Sullivan. I thank you for joining us. I will continue to bring uh, information to you through this show, and I look forward to seeing you for the 47th uh, episode. Be well and stay safe. Thank you.